Hello Tubesters, it's Gav. Welcome to another one of my videos. I'm really prepared as usual. Sorry about the hand movements and the lights and everything else and the lights bouncing off the glasses. Uh, today we're looking at this. An unboxing. It's a 54mm figure of a Highland officer. I think he's an officer. Let me just check. Yeah. Highland officer of the 93rd Regiment Southern Highlanders. Uh, approximately Crimean War. 1854 this one is, but uh, I got this just as lockdown in the UK, was it March? <laughs> it goes on doesn't it, so I think it was about March and I had a small panic on that I wanted a couple of figures in my stash uh, in case <laughs> doomsday scenario you couldn't get anything, the postal service was only doing priority type mail, not figures or kits and uh, I got this one uh, I love the FER range, they are to me some of the best uh, you can get out there at this scale and uh, I, <laughs> I wanted to do tartan again, now the only tartan I have ever painted uh, is in AB 18mm and that was a long time ago, although I do have uh, for a client uh, a, small, a small display stand of, uh, of black watch to do. Now looking at this tartan I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it looks like the government set. Uh, the, the tartan uh, is called a set I believe or it is in government terms anyway and certain regiments obviously had their own particular uh, tartan uh, I believe, I'm no expert, uh, and certain regiments had a particular government uh, uh, set and this to me looks like the black watch uh, that I remember doing some research on when I was uh, painting those ABs. I might be totally wrong uh, until I actually get down into the depths of it uh, and look but I do believe that looks like the government set. So yeah the masochist in me wanted to paint some tartan. Uh, I, I didn't want to go as far as 75 mils and 90 mil figures and that. Uh, the, the, I, I quite enjoy the 54 mils as I've said to you before they're quite a nice starter figure um, they don't take a lot of room up, especially if you just put them on a plinth. Uh, they're fairly cost effective, you know, you can get them. Oh, let's see, I honestly can't remember how much and I've got no, no price on this. I've got this from El Greco, by the way, El Greco miniatures. Uh, they, they retail around the £20 mark, of course, postage and things on top of that. But uh, uh, they're a nice figure. If you want to go up a scale from, you say, classical war games 28 mils and things like that and you, you want to cut your teeth I would say obviously just like uh, building model kits pick something you like don't don't just don't just pick something because it's um, cheap say uh, you know or I'll have a go because if you if you take on something like this Highland officer you know you've you've got to be fairly you know, if, if not so much fairly good because we all make mistakes, and I'm going to make a ton of mistakes on this one. What I'm trying to say is, you might beat yourself up too much if you suddenly take on a tartan and you don't think it's very good, then that might put you off figure painting forever, you know, so or large scale figure painting. So pick something that, to begin with, a couple of figures that are fairly straightforward. You know, I'm not going to tell you what, it's obviously it's your decision, it's your, it's your likes and dislikes, but. Pick something that isn't going to ca cause you too much pain to begin with. That's going to that's gonna come. <laughs> but you'll at least know that you've done other figures to base this one off. If, if we're talking about tartan, so. So, yeah. I probably will not be doing this for about another week or two. Um, it, it, I've, I'm just getting this last bit of commission, of this, this commission out of the way. Uh, and I'll... I'll obviously doing my Tyrant 4 build which is a 1 in 30 fast scale tank if you're not into the models uh, I'm building at the moment and um, there's <laughs> just, is only so much time if you've got so yeah we'll go down to the bench guys and we'll have a look uh, at this guy and see what uh, what he looks like uh, the safe done no work to him there'll probably still be the casting blocks and that attached uh, but we'll have a look and see what you get for your money right guys thanks for joining me at the bench Sorry if the lights are a bit bright, but I'll be putting these up to the camera. 
Right, we have legs and torso attached. Sparring. I haven't got a point, pointy stick as usual. The ones I can find are fairly messy, I do apologise. But yeah, there's some nice detail which you're going to get with resin anyway. Um, in the sparring, it's flowing nicely, we've got the nice tassels. The animal head. That's nice. We've got loads of surface area here to <laughs> to stuff up stuff up our tartan. Let's just check the yeah, we've got the pleat. You've always gonna have pleats, obviously. Um they're gonna be fairly hard to work with, I would imagine. Trying to make sure everything's in the right place. But you have to have pleats on a on a kilt, so you've got to live with it. Kind of strapping for for the sabre or sword, all the different slings, I should say, rather than strapping. I think, but the slings. Uh, you tend to find with with Highland uh, units that have the kilt, they have a different. Uh, I don't know if this is at this period, but they normally have a different, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to accommodate the kilt, they have a different style of uh, bottom to the jacket. It's got a, looks like he's carrying a bread bag. I will call it a bread bag anyway. He's got his dirk. Again, some very fine details on, on that. It looks like we've got a little crest here, some nice like fit. What they call it? Finial work. I'm not sure, what, but uh, on the hilt of the the dirk. Again, nice work with the the different emboss work on the different brass. The, the different brass work. We've got the wings here. Really nice. You can't see any, apart from obviously you've got a bit of dust types. I'm sorry for the grubby fingernails guys, I have tried to scrub them, but that's as best as you get we have. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, I don't see particularly any holes. Might be a tiny one under there, but you know, you'll fill it, but it's not gonna be seen anyway. But now the legs are fine. Don't see any massive mould lines, although the, this is very light. Oh, there we've got, we got the usual, there's got to be some somewhere. Uh, we've got slight ones obviously there, but again, inside of the leg. Quick sand. Uh, again, this is resin, guys. Uh, I've, I think I've mentioned it on a few, enough videos now, but when I'm preparing a figure, whether it's a, a bust or one of these type of figures, uh, if it's a Harry Potter figure, if it's if it's resin, I uh, wet some uh, kitchen towel, I put that all over my desk uh, and it's all nice and wet and that catches a lot of the dust and shavings and that that's going to fall on it. Uh, I actually wet the figure as I'm actually sanding, to, again just to try and keep that dust down and I wear a properly, you know, to, to, I don't just wear a dust mask. You can wear a dust mask, I suppose. That's entirely up to you. That's your decision. Gav's health and safety tip. Uh, I actually wear the filtered ones, you know, that you would do for spray, and I happen to have a spare one, and I use that just for, for resin, and sometimes even if I'm doing a heck of a lot of sanding on a, on a, on a kit, on a plastic kit. Uh, then when I've finished, obviously, I can wrap all that wet tissue paper up, uh, dispose of it, and then again I go round with another damp cloth, <laughs> wipe the whole area and beyond, and then I go and hoover everything up, because resin dust is not good for you. Uh, so, you know, it's up to you what you do, but I'd strongly suggest working like that. Uh, we see some bits here, that's classic resin, you know, that's, that's just a way of, you'll chobble that away with a sharp scalpel. Yeah, really nice, like that. Let's go and see. Faces always sell figures for me. I might say sell, I'm not commercially just... Now that 
face looks so much like a lot of the black I've got several books on the Crimea and his sideburns there the way his hair styled the actual face itself it looks like it's just come out of a sepia uh, early early photographs which they pioneered them a lot in the in the Crimean War of, of, of taking photographs of of war I mean, they're not going to be seen under there. I'd have probably just seen that. I'd like to see maybe just a tiny bit of texture under here, but uh, we'll forgive them for that. It's it's not really on show. Casting plug at the top will have to be removed. Nice button details. Here's you've got the diced, I think they call it the diced uh, banding at the top, which will obviously a checkerboard if you want to put it that way. Yeah, really nice. I like it. I'm just picking them as a table as I go. Scabbard, not much you can say. Uh, quick sand over that. Again, casting plug. Water canteen, not changed since Waterloo. Wooden, usually painted blue. Often with the uh, the company, uh, particularly company details on. Little plug there to put it into, but very nice details. You can see the wood. Well, you might be able to see the wood marks on there as well. Grain, I should say. Arms. So have a look at the fingers and hands again. They often sell figures as well because if you see them with great big lumps rather than any detail, it's nothing worse. But no, that's that's fairly decent. Got some tendons or whatever at the back there standing out. Arm itself, not much you can say. Obviously, you can, a bit of work. You might need a bit of filling on this. A couple of bit of bit of knocked out resin there. Slight mould line. But again, dry fit them up, you know, put them to the to the talk to the arms itself. What you're lucky with here, and in fact, let's just I doubt you, whenever I do these type of things on camera, they don't work, but let's just as it doesn't want to play now, all fingers and thumbs with my great big sausage hands. Now what I was trying to say is with those wings there, you'll actually you probably still have to get it to fit play around with a plug to get it to actually fit in but with those wings there that might cover a lot and itself this one I know it looks all deformed but that's because it's going to fit into the the basket of the hilt here so there so the only thing that's really noticeable screaming out is we've got a toasting fork here Looks like he's just been toasting uh, muffins or toast. Look at that. Uh, it wouldn't have hurt them to put that on a piece of cardboard and tape it down. Uh, I'm hoping this is really, really thin and delicate as well. So, and obviously we've got our, you can see where you've got the, the blood groove in the, in the sword there. It's like an air channel that was. It's, it's, it's going to sound horrible, but when you stick a bayonet in somebody or a, or a sword blade, the the groove there allows the air to actually pull the sword or the bayonet out of somebody. Otherwise, they get stuck. Um, the as you can see, there's bits of resin in there, so we might just have to. It's going to be really delicate. But we might just have to run something in there, so there's not just a you know that little bit there or maybe chobbles very <laughs> very gingerly stick this down so it's flat and supported and then just uh, just swipe a, the the blunt end of a scalpel through it and just just try and clear that up a bit but that's the worst bit I'm really hoping that can be flattened out with either some warm water or a, I've, I have tried my just warm warming my hands on it um, because that is one of the most noticeable things obviously it's sticking over his shoulder well you don't want to see in that do you so I shall not be chuffed 
if I can't get that straight. And that's a sh I mean, when they're like when they're this thin, you're always going to have trouble. You know, they're not the first sword blade that I've had bent, but sometimes, no matter how you work them, they don't want to play, and you end up with something like this. So yeah, let's just fingers crossed, guys, that we can get this one fairly straight because that is disappointing. <laughs> We do not want to have that over the over the shoulder of our figure because no matter what you've done on your figure, how well you've painted it, all people will be looking at is the bendy sword. So let's hope we get that sorted. If I was good enough, I've even thought of replacing that uh, with some with some brass, but I just don't think I'm good enough to. I might actually knock a piece up. And just see, or plastic card even, and just see if I can get that. If this doesn't, because I really do not think that is going to is going to flatten out enough. You never know. Right, guys. Oh, and there's a base as well. Just a really bog standard, you know, base. Probably won't be using that because there's nothing to it. They do do other bases. I've seen. I've, you've seen some of my other. I think the Celtic Warrior. If you go on my. My figures are uh, part of my, you know, my oh, back catalogue of videos. Uh, they do do some nice, nice bases, but this one is literally like he's, he's walked in wet concrete. Right, guys, I'm waffling. Uh, I really do appreciate you stopping by and taking a look at my videos. Uh, they mean a lot to me to, to, to have you guys stopping by and taking a look. Uh, it's appreciated. As I say, this guy will be up. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet, whether I'm going to do it as a, as a bunch of separate videos, whether I'm going to just, I've even thought of just, just doing it like some people, paint the whole thing. I don't know if I'm going to be good enough to paint this one on, on a camera with, with a camera hanging over because, you know, this is tart and there's a lot of work in this, but we'll see. I'll, I might mock up the tripod. I've got the, let's just get him into shot quickly. This guy here. I've got, uh, I'm going to be, I've done a base on him. And lo and behold, look at that, I can see a piece of primer showing through. <laughs> right, when we've, been, when we've painted, when we've, when we've taken out the bits of primer that's showing through, uh, we, <laughs> I'll be doing him tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, we'll, I'll be filming that that uh, torso uh, for the flesh. Uh, I said I'd, do, I'd show the flesh on the 1 in 35 scale figure, so, um, yeah. I've done a base and I'm obviously going to be showing another base. It'll do a second base on that and touch up the bits I've just seen. Uh, but apart from that, uh, he'll be videoed and then hopefully up with you in the next couple of days. So guys, you take care of yourselves. Uh, look after each other. I hope everything's going well with you project-wise and health-wise. And we will catch each other very soon on another video. Cheers.